Good Thursday evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Western Mass News at 6. I'm Chris Pisano. Let's take a quick look at what's making the latest headlines. As local restaurants await word about reopening, eateries to the south of our border get ready to welcome diners this week. Or rather, next week. The State Gaming Commission votes to extend casino closures right through June 1st, and CVS will now offer drive through testing at two Western Mass sites starting tomorrow. Although states in the Northeast are more or less coordinating their reopening plans, it's evident that some states will open things before others. Connecticut expected to reopen patio dining for restaurants on May 20th, and New Hampshire is slated to do the same on the 18th. Whether or not Massachusetts will announce similar protocols on restaurants come Monday is still unknown. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us now live in Springfield with more. Audrey. Chris, that's right. The waiting continues for business owners in Massachusetts as the governor has said he will not reveal which industries are a part of the phase one of the reopening plan until May 18th. Restaurants in particular are expected to face heavy regulations upon reopening, which they must comply with before they can start serving customers in any capacity. In Massachusetts, it's unclear whether restaurants will be able to even partially open on May 18th, when the state's advisory board will present their reopening guidelines. Many restaurant owners are chomping at the bit to resume some semblance of normalcy. A hundred restaurant professionals signed a letter to the governor asking him to partially reopen restaurants on May 19th. In Connecticut, restaurants are expected to start serving guests again on the 20th. They're opening up the patios or the availability to open up the patios with, uh, with restrictions on what we have to do to make sure that we're compliant with the governor's regulations. Western Mass News spoke over the phone with John Thomas, the general manager of Max's Tavern in Springfield. That restaurant is owned by a larger company with locations in Massachusetts, Florida, and Connecticut. Thomas says it's been easier for the Connecticut locations to prepare for a May 20th patio dining reopening that meets their governor's standards. It's very helpful to know in advance. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty comprehensive list of things that you have to do, and for good reason. We want to we make sure it's, uh, that we're as safe as possible. Not knowing what the Bay State's return to outdoor dining will entail, Thomas tells Western Mass News they're doing what they can to prepare based on Connecticut's guidelines. He says that although Massachusetts may reopen later than Connecticut, he doesn't think it will drive too many people away from their favorite Western Mass takeout spots. I think people will go down to eat in Connecticut, yes. Uh, I don't think it's going to hurt re Massachusetts restaurants. Uh, uh, we're all closed right now unless we're doing takeout. Um, but I think that's th the capacities that they're opening with are low, so low that there's going to be there's going to be more people than there are seats at restaurants, if I had to guess. Thomas says his main concern is ensuring the safety of both his guests and customers and his staff. In hoping to instill that there's going to be confidence that all restaurants won't be a health hazard. Live in Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. Audrey, thank you for that information. The department, Massachusetts Department of Public Health, releasing the latest numbers. And so far, the number of tests conducted is 424,361, with 14,329 tests done today. The Department of Public Health confirming 82,182 positive cases today. 5,482 people have died so far from COVID-19, with 167 new deaths reported today. And breaking down those numbers for you county by county, here in Western Mass, Hamden County reporting 4,974 coronavirus cases, Hampshire County 724, Franklin 302, and Berkshire County 488. So in total, Western Mass has 6,488 COVID-19 cases. The Massachusetts Gaming Commission just finished a meeting a short while ago as they look ahead to reopening MGM Springfield and two other casinos in our state, which may be the last in the country to do so. Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Kane joins us now live in downtown Springfield with more. Lindsay. Action taken today, the Gaming Commission voted unanimously to extend the temporary closure of casinos in the state until at least June 1st. The commission did not discuss any potential dates for reopening during the teleconference, but did talk about what reopening will look like in the future. 
MGM Springfield laid out a seven point plan to ensure the safety of their guests and employees. One, screening and temperature checks. Two, masks and personal protective equipment. Three, social distancing. Four, hand washing and enhanced sanitation. Five, air quality. Six, incidents response protocols. And seven, digital innovations. Officials from MGM Resort say they are focusing on how they will enforce social distancing. We will be turning off, or should I say disabling, uh, every other slot machine. Uh, removing stools. Um, all of our guest facing employees are going to be trained in terms of looking for and encouraging people that are gathering. Uh, we are hopeful uh, um, that uh, people will as well um, simply distance themselves. The commissioners ask questions about personal protective equipment, screenings, and how they will be communicating new protocols with guests and employees. MGM Springfield has been closed since March 15th, as ordered by the Gaming Commission. Since then, they have extended the shutdown several times and have now extended again until at least June 1st. As the impact of the pandemic continues to be felt, MGM Resort CEO has warned that nearly 1,900 layoffs could happen at MGM Springfield by the end of August. Live in Springfield, Lindsay Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsay, thank you for that live report. More opportunities for coronavirus testing right here in Western Mass starting tomorrow as CVS rolls out new drive through COVID-19 sites. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis joining us now live outside of CVS in West Springfield where one of those, which was one of those selected locations. Unfortunately, Leon, I'm being told, is not live at this moment, having some technical difficulties. So tomorrow, self-swab tests will be offered at the drive through windows at two CVS locations in Western Mass. One is the CVS on Riverdale Street in West Springfield, and the other is the CVS on King Street in Northampton. There are two of 10 new drive through testing sites around Massachusetts. CVS Health has been an early partner with the state's COVID-19 response team. Governor Baker in a press conference just today announcing the testing protocols and what we can expect. Individuals who meet testing criteria will be able to register in advance at CVS.com starting tomorrow to schedule an appointment. Patients will be required to stay in their cars and directed to the pharmacy drive through window where they will be provided with a self-swab test kit and given instructions. Tests will then be sent to a lab for processing and results will be available in approximately two or three days. Seems like a pretty straightforward procedure. Now CVS says the opening of more test sites in the Bay State will be announced in the next two weeks, and we'll be sure to tell you where they are. Now at 6, the staff at Mater Dolorosa School in Holyoke is missing their students. So what better way to catch a glimpse of them than with a reverse parade? Students and families were invited to come to the school and hold a parade. And families paraded around the social center parking lot in their decorated cars, honking horns, and waving to the staff. Western Mass News spoke to Maureen Donnellan, the principal of Mater Dolorosa, on what this parade means to the school community. The teachers and I have missed the kids greatly. It breaks my heart to not be able to see their smiling faces every day. The teachers miss, you know, actually instructing face to face and just being there for them. And it's, it's so different distance learning. Now, in addition to that cheerful parade, Donilon says the weather couldn't have been more perfect for an outdoor event. And for more coverage on the coronavirus emergency as it continues to develop, just log on to our free Western Mass News streaming app. Well, we had perfect weather for the parade there. Temperatures are currently in the 60s as you go into some of the higher elevations. We're at 71 in Northampton, 73 in Greenfield, 70 degrees officially as we speak in Springfield. This is a really nice change compared to where we have in the past couple of days. We've built those temperatures tomorrow. We'll be on the warm side, also turning a bit muggier. We're starting to see some of the clouds building in in advance of some showers that will be arriving late tonight and into early Friday. You see some of the showers pushing in our direction, even some severe weather out towards Ohio. This is all part of the milder air mass that will be in place. As you wake up tomorrow morning, you're going to open that door and you're going to feel that humidity. It will feel like summer throughout much of the day tomorrow. So after the warm front pushes through, we have the mild and muggy air in place. And then the cold front's going to tap into that, kicking off some showers, thunderstorms, potentially some severe storms.
tomorrow afternoon and evening. We'll be watching these closely behind this shaping up to be a nice weekend. In fact, the storms for tomorrow can be packing uh, strong winds, some large hail, potentially even a tornado. Uh, the timing of this Friday afternoon into Friday evening. So again, we'll be watching these closely, but the weekend will be nice. Chris, I can't wait to show you those numbers in just a few minutes. Back to you. I can't wait to see those numbers. Jacob, thank you. Still ahead. Do you have summer travel on your mind? Western Mass News getting answers on what you need to know before you plan on hitting the road. And still ahead, Connecticut's largest fair canceled due to COVID-19. We'll have more on what drove that decision straight ahead.